What's going on there, guys? We got JJ Reddick response to Dominique Wilkins. Now, guys, you know there was a big back and forth uh, last week where Dominique Wilkins questioned some of JJ Reddick's comments. And what JJ Reddick was trying to say was that uh, this era is more physical than the era that Larry Bird played in. And he's using uh, Steph Curry, what he gets, you know, when he's coming off of the screens, the way he's held and you know, the measures used to, pr to impede his progress is more physical than any basketball Larry Bird uh, played, you know, back in the previous era. And that was met with a lot of resistance, specifically from Dominique Wilkins. And what he said was that he didn't know what he was talking about, pretty much. And so uh, J.J. Reddick has responded on his podcast, man, and this is what he had to say. I watched the video, but whatever the comment or the question was to Dominique centered around this idea that I disrespected Larry Bird. How? How? Did disrespect Larry Bird? I questioned the narrative around physicality. I said, for every montage video you can show me of Larry Bird being in a headlock underneath the basket, I can show you a montage video of him shooting open jumpers, of him coming off pin downs. Yeah. I could show Steph the same way. I could show Steph getting held. I could show Larry getting held. It's like, it's all basketball. Outside of fouls, hard fouls, and fighting, the physicality, the basketball play by play by play, the physicality is not that much different than today's NBA. Again, what I would say to JJ Reddick is, some of the boundaries that's been set by the officiating and the NBA at this point, though, I think makes it very different. You know, if the person that undercuts you intentionally is only assessed with a foul and sometimes a technical foul or a flagrant foul or whatever, he remains in the game. The next time you go up or the way you're playing, you, now you're looking at this guy Every time you attack the basket, you either going to deliver an elbow to his face, you know, to send a message and take your foul, or you're um, cautious and you may actually blow a layup trying to shield yourself in a way because you're bracing, you know, for contact, but not just the contact itself. You're bracing for a fall because you know the hard foul is coming. So that would be my um, rebuttal to that, but continue. But it's become such a talking point that people take it as gospel. And the reality is, from my lens, from my eyes, when I watch older games, there's not a discernible difference between Michael Jordan in the post now versus Jokic in the post now. Okay, I'm gonna be brief on this segment. Now, what I will say uh, there, JJ, I disagree again, because other than like Jaron Jackson Jr. helping at the fourth spot or like him playing against Joel and B, you know, as far as rim protection or Walker Kessler. Now, you know, you can add him to that list too, but it's only a few guys that actually protect the rim uh, in, in this era where Jokic would have to worry about it. And the physicality is much less down there because you have a lot of guys that are stretch players or they're not comfortable in the post in my opinion. So their post defense isn't particularly up to par. And some of that is their fault, but some of it is not. It's just the rules of the game where they can't be as physical. The greatest players of every era, whether that's Wilt, Jerry West, Larry Bird, they would be fine in any era. And one of the pushbacks on that comment is always today's players wouldn't be fine in the 80s and 90s which is fucking horse shit okay so now jj hear me out on this you know i i'm from the older era you know what i'm saying as far as the fan base you know i i agree with the older era a lot of times but what i will say about what you're saying is you actually have a point there because a lot of people say uh, lebron's not physical enough or uh you know well he's too soft he flops too much boom 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 right well what i always would say to that though see the older era does have a habit of only pointing out what they want to see. And sometimes what they want to see is not accurate because LeBron would have went to like a North Carolina, just like Michael Jordan back, you know, back in that time frame, he would have learned under Dean Smith for about three years. Like LeBron wouldn't have came straight out or nothing. 
he would have been in college for an extended amount of time to build his fundamentals. So uh, you have to look at it like that too. My, uh, LeBron would be a he like as good as he is now. He would be much tighter had he come along in that time with some of the things like as far as his offense and stuff. Um, and, and he's a great offensive player. Don't get me wrong, but I'm saying he would be he would have came in where shooting wasn't like. You wouldn't be going under LeBron's screens as much when he came into the league. And he would have been a dynamic player from the post, you know, right away. But he would have been, like, he would have been able to grab it off the board, you know, and, and do what he do in transition. And he would have been equally as lethal on the block, like, from almost from day one with his build, his athleticism, and his natural overall talent. So I do agree, you know, we can't pick and choose when we say, oh, this era, this era, but not consider the other things that benefited the previous era. So, of course, I'm going to push back on that narrative. That's what it comes down to. It is not a knock on... Dude, Dominique Wilkins is fucking awesome. He was awesome. Larry Bird was awesome. Jerry West was awesome. Bob Cousy was awesome. No shade. No shade. I don't actually enjoy comparing eras. Like I got asked about it on first take with when LeBron broke the record. Who's the greatest player of all time? You know, and it's like, well, Jordan said it best. Jordan said it best. Gave an interview with Mike Wilbon in 2009. I can't say I'm the greatest player of all time. I didn't play against Wilt. I didn't play against Jerry West. I don't know. The better question is who's the greatest player of a generation? Who's the greatest player of an era? That's a better question. So to summarize this, I mean, I agree with that. As far as comparing eras and, and saying you're the GOAT of all time, I mean, you have to think about this, right? The GOAT is just who you've seen in your lifespan. You know, it, the game will be here before you and after you. So there is no way to definitively ever say that. You can only see the world from the time span that you exist. So after, like... So 50, 60 years from now, there will be this other player. You know, uh, you know, we don't know what a guy like Victor Wimbyama is going to come in and do, either, if he's even going to be healthy enough to sustain a career. But with his talent, you know, he's one of those ones that you're looking at. Like, I'm curious what he's going to do as he puts on lean muscle over time and if he can stay healthy. So you'll have these guys come in in different eras and – when people don't see it live, it's hard for them to grasp what actually took place. You can go back and watch it uh, on YouTube or you can watch it on like NBA Classics or whatever. But if you weren't there when it happened, like, you know, some of the things Bill Russell and them endured off the court, like with the racism and stuff, that's just a different mind frame you have to have uh, to go out there and play at a high level when you deal with these things. You know, they had a... They, they went into his house and left turds on the man's bed, you know. Um, so the mental fortitude that it took in different times, you can't take that away from them. And so, yeah, it, it's good to just say you can only compare errors. And then when you just look at the basketball in terms of basketball, like a long time ago, I mean, I think you used to only could get two fouls in the game back in the early 1900s. And you fouled out with two fouls. And, you know, at one point, obviously, there was no three-point line. <laughs> I mean, you know, so that I say that to say the rules just vastly change because they're, they're always steadily looking for ways to improve the game. Now, you can have top guys at that time, but after you change so many rules and so many things, only thing you have in common is a basketball going through the hoop. But everything around the game is vastly different. So... That's what I would say to that. Um, but it, it's great to enjoy all these players. And it's okay chatter. But as far as it being definitive and it being absolute, like who's the best player ever, there's too many factors to weigh in to ever say that. You know, it's going to – nostalgia is going to play a big part in your personal feelings. Other than that, though <laughs> – You'll be arguing till you turn blue in the face, man. But, hey, I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.